I do feel like shit. I'm not going to lie. I've got a cold. And I'll tell you what happened on Monday, shall I? Shall we just say she's not the right girl? I am still friends with her. That's why I ain't saying any names. Not, not yet. But yeah, um, so what happened is I went in the restaurant. I was pretty, um, pretty nervous. So then I sat next to her. Now, usually I'd be jumping for joy. I'd be like, oh, wait a minute. This is exactly what I want. She was on her phone all the time. She's very grinning. And of course, I looked over and I knew who was sitting next to her. And I thought, ah, oh, great. You know what that means then? So anyway, I talked to Matt, and he said, oh, I asked her if she were, if she is. Then I looked at him, I said, you didn't get a good response, did you? He said, no, I got an all right response, but I'm worried how you're going to be. And I said, look, I have an inkling at summer. I have a sixth sense. And he said, well, hopefully that's not going to come true. I said, yeah, well. So anyway, sat down, sort of talked to her. Then we moved tables. Then she sat opposite me. Then the fish came. Then she said, well, go on, fish is nice. It's good for you, try it. Because you know what I'm like. Quite a um, funny eater, shall we say. Um, not funny. Fussy eater. Very fussy eater. Don't like trying new food. So anyway, after I had a few bites of fish, it's not my cup of tea, but I'm very glad I did it. As the night wore on, I looked at her. I wrote her a message on a napkin, which is very romantic and like they do in the films. And I said, I need to talk to you after. She put, okay, smiley face. Then I saw her pass this napkin over to this woman who she's been sitting next to. Remember that? Woman. Okay. Anyway, she said, oh, it's an invite to a party. My mother was sitting next to her and I said, that's not an invite to a party. I said, trust me, that is not an invite to a party. Well, it wasn't, was it? Because when she went to Lou, this other woman dropped it on the floor deliberately. So mother could say exactly what it said. So mother went happy she lied to her and she was a little shocked. And I said, I've told you all week, don't be shocked. <laughs> Now, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, we all know what she is. No, you don't. Not yet. She's been sending me emails with kisses on saying, I'll see you tonight. Hugs. I like hugs. As if to say, oh, I want a hug off you. So that got me thinking, oh, that's good. That's a good start that she's sending me emails without me sending any more to her. That's really good. That shows you that women, this woman is into me. Anyway, she gets back from Lou, and I said, Ron, quick chat, come over here. So she walks with me over there. Uh, get to near the bar. <clears throat> well, well, kitchen, bar, whatever. And then I just said to her, Ron, do you want my number? She just looks like... And I'm like, come on, you're not a stuffed doll. What dear, don't you? Her chaperone comes over. Then she says, oh, because um, <clears throat> she's Australian. She says, oh, give me a minute, Andrew. Um, I'm just going to the toilet. I said, all right. It's a bit odd. Anyway, sits down, and then there she is. Going to sit down, and then Lee, who's the DJ at the club, he actually puts out his hand physically and stops her. So that's my cue then, to get up. <clears throat> I went over to her, I whispered to her, I said, right, look. <clears throat> I've had bullshit from women before. Normal bullshit. Tell me the truth. Are you single or not? She looks at me for a good five seconds. Very sheepish. Very shy. Very like, oh shit. She said, I'll write it down for you. She wrote it down. I went over by Matt. Then he said, right, I'm open. I said, no, i got to do this. I've done all the work to do with this one. I have to do this. I opened it. <clears throat> My worst fears were confirmed. It said, I'm into girls. Well, anyway, that's not the end of the story. He said, oh, I've been through a bad relationship. You don't, you don't want to know 
Well, the last one did to me. I said, well, she did the same thing to me. So I know how you feel. Anyway, mother beckons me over and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at her right now. I'm looking at her <laughs> with this snarling look on my face. Like, Rrr. Just like, how can you, not how can you be like that? How can you break it to me in, in this way type thing? But I could not let it go on any longer. I fancied her for six weeks. I saw her two years ago. And I've been sort of thinking about her ever since. Anyway, reluctantly, I go over, I sit down and I say, <clears throat> and I say, look, there's nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about. And you see Linda there with just this look on her face. Like, I'm so relieved that you know. Anyway, I, I look at her and I said, if this were two years ago, I would not be talking to you right now. You'd be done. No way. But the thing is, is this. I need a woman in my life who's a friend. And I've got quite a few women that are friends. But this one is still very special to me. <sighs> because of the way she looks. Her personality, personally, I don't like. I'm not going to say it stinks. But I don't like it. <sighs> so... If I would have said I want you out in my life, I know I'm coming to the club every week, but I don't want to talk to you. It'd be pointless because it'd do it'd do my head in. So I thought, well, whatever. Look, I'm still going to get hugs. I'm still going to get to speak to you, and in the future, you never know. Anyway, then she comes out with it. She says, "Look, I still like you because I'm by." Half of me just sank down into a chair. Because like, it's a sheer relief that you like men. But it's such a shame. Because I'm never going to have you to myself. I'm never going to have you. So anyway. She said, look, I still want to be friends. I, I don't want to want you to, as if to say, abandon me. So then it comes out in the wash. The guy who she sits next to he went out with her for a few weeks then she brought the news to him what she was he finished it but he's still friends with her i haven't got a number i've got her email but as we are still friends i'll try and get a number um i still like i still fancy you know i, I can't just switch it off it's it's not a switch i can't just click I've still got my trucks, I've still got my photography, I've still got the club, and I know now that I can look at other women and be like, if you like her, you can go over to her if if I have the guts and see if she's single. I'm not strapped with, you know what I'm saying, with this one. I love her looks, especially with her down. Best thing I've ever seen, and I'm not going to lie. Better looking than a Scania. <laughs> But I, I'm so happy that I am still her friend. I would love to go to the cinema with her in December, around Christmas. I've always wanted to do that with a woman. I know she'll be looking at other fellas, other women, I get that. But I can also be looking at other women and thinking, look, if I like her on seat, whatever, go over and talk to her. And she might even give me the courage to do so. Because she has given me the courage to do so much over the past few weeks. I've done so much. On my own. That I, I thought would happen to me when I'm 30 or something like that. You know what I mean? So I am really glad. She has given me confidence. And I've also felt love. I have felt love for the first time in 10 years or more. Um, so I'm glad I know what it is. Anyway. So yeah. I'm still very let down. Because. I still have to find someone. It's the winter time, and we all know winter depresses lots of people, and especially with what's what's going on in the world nowadays. I thought I was in. I thought I was a few steps away, and I fucking wasn't. Or should that be? I fucking not. So yeah, I I am heartbroken. I am dismayed. You know, I, you know how I feel. Everybody does because you've been through it. But at the end of the day, I'm still happy. And I'll tell you why. Six women 
I liked in 2019. All of the six I now know where they are, what they're doing, who they're with. <laughs> that might sound kind of creepy, but two of them are my exes. And this one, who I fancied over the past few weeks, exactly the same. I went to the club where my first ex went, the Friday club, the dancing club. She was there. She stirred right at me with this smile that can light up New York City. What are the odds of her going just once and me being there at the same time? The good thing is now, and I don't have said it on Andy's life before, but this is what I've been thinking. There's no shackles. And what I mean is that I now know this year I've fancied about three women and I now know that One's a lesbian, one's bi, and one's just a scammer. So now if I like somebody, if there's no reins attached, I can go there, I can try and win her for myself. No holes barred, you don't need to look back, and you can be like, wait a minute, I can put all my effort in to whoever I like next. Hopefully she is straight, with a good personality, and looks like my cousin Nicola, but that's a different story. So from now on, I've decided whatever I do, it's not for other people, it's for me. It's taken a long time, it's taken a lot of things to decide that, but I have to do it from now on. And this woman, who's 22, I'm still being friends with her, I still like her, and you never know what could develop in the future, you know? I'm not going to say I can get me oats. I'm not saying that. But you never know. And it's not a, and it's not about that with me. It's about companionship. I need a companion. I'm not saying she's my companion. But if she's someone to go out with to have a walk and go to cinema and see at the clubs. And, you know, maybe even have a laugh with. I don't know. It's better than nothing. I'm still winning. And I'm still getting what I want. But at the end of the day, this is what I really want. A companion, a woman to talk to on the phone, on the email, seeing her once a week or more than once a week. That's what I want. Because a girlfriend, girlfriends in my opinion, are very hard to deal with, especially when you get the wrong ones. A friend you can have much, much more fun with. So we'll see what's what. And because I have got a lot more friends nowadays, it's easier to cope with. Yes, I have still been crying. She's on my mind all the time. I can't help it. It's a switch. I can't just turn it off. But I'm doing the photography tonight. Um, I got a chap last night in a beautiful Scania. I tracked it. He's offered me money for the shots. And I'm going to meet him uh, in Rochdale next week. So life isn't going well at the minute. It's it's a bad week. But whatever I have to say to it, I have to say it on Monday. Just get it off my chest, get it off my mind. Move on, chapter two, you know. We're still the three amigos. We're still good friends. She's got what she wants. I'm still going to get what I want. So there you go. Maybe not first fair in love and war because it isn't. But I prepared over the last week. I was so surprised. I think everyone was surprised that she's bi and not just a lesbian. But it's not the point. I had a sixth sense and it proved me right. Anyway, 13 minutes long, so have a good one. <clears throat> I'll get back to you next Wednesday. Who knows? More juicy gossip. I, I don't know, but this is my life and I need to say about it. And it's not really for people to watch. And what I mean is, yeah, if I get more subscribers in the future, fine with me. But it's really for when I get that son of mine, he can watch it, he can look back. And if he has any of these experiences, God forbid he doesn't, then he'll, he'll see what I've done. And anyway, I have a good one. I'll speak to you next Wednesday. Hopefully upload another Portsmouth video. We'll see what's what. I know a lot of people like that. We'll see, we'll see what happens tonight. And more crucially, on Monday, can I look at her the same? Can I smile at her the same? Or will I just blank her? We'll see what I feel up here. Have a good one. Ta-da.